a Bissell multi-reach active 21 volt cordless vacuum cleaner. A machine that we haven't seen on this channel before. And it runs okay. Doesn't seem too bad in terms of physically working. This machine's problem is that the inner hose has split. Obviously in the UK, I think Bessel and Vax are quite closely related in terms of parent company. So this is of zero surprise to anyone. But I've never touched one of these before. I told the lady I couldn't promise anything, but I would probably be able to give it a go. So we're gonna do that together and see if we can replace the hose in this head. Let's have a look. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner and broken cordless chums. How are you today? Yeah, we have the familiar split in a hose. And I've already realised that I don't have the right tools on this to open up this bottom plate. I thought it was a different sort of latch, but no, it is a half twist. Yeah, cordless vacuum cleaners, not really meant you to be repaired, as I'm sure we've realised by now. Oh, there we go, look, we're, we're fixing it already, even though what I'm trying to do is take the brush roll out. Oh my God, there's a second one. <gasps> oh, nearly just ripped that out, right. Ah, okay. This is possibly the beefiest cordless power head for a cordless vacuum that I've seen. Look at that big old tooth belt. And here is the brush roll, although I cannot help but notice that it, it brushes the way of the angle. So it doesn't really, you know, I don't think it does. We'll have a play with it properly in a bit. It doesn't seem to really pull the pile up, whether that's intentional or not, I don't know. So we have the brush roll out. I think the next thing to do is to just undo every single screw on this floor. Out. Then I'm assuming that one part is going to come away from the other. And it's usually the lid that does this. Oh, have I missed a, have I missed a screw? No. There won't, there won't be any hiding under there. Uh, nothing under there. Ow, this is one under this front bit. Because if I put it back, it's being, it looks like it's being held somewhere. Ah, look at that. There's a hidden screw under the belt. I think this trim piece has to come off, you know. Oh, how the heck does that work? I think there's a screw because I can... Can I see the bottom of it? I don't know what that little white dimple is way back there in the back of the head because it now seems like it's being held up. Yeah, it is. There as well. Ow. Just... No, there isn't a screw under there. There's no screw under the handle. There isn't one under there. So, I think I'm going to see if this trim bit unclips to reveal a screw underneath. Yes, look, there's three. So, that was worth it. Yeah, the, that bit of trim comes off. This bit of trim is held on by the other screw. Hey, there it is. You can leave the two bits of trim that hold mm. this bit together, should you wish. We have had one of the motor rubbers pop out and this is the inside of our Bissell. Although we're going to have to go up the top in a minute. Now the question is how does this inner hose come off of here? Oh, it doesn't at all. Uh, ah, I see a screw. This is very much like the Vax Airhead. Very much like it indeed. There we go. Then, oh, ah, you come off. Look, these unplug, so very much unlike a shark, which is nice. Oh, I do believe that we can unplug 
the entire neck from the board as well. So you don't have to faff around too much with everything. So yeah, here is our inner hose. And, ah, fab. There is a screw type fixing in there because I was a little bit worried it was going to be a push fit and a bit difficult, but there is a screw thread in there. So that's that half out. Now, do we just pull this out? We do. And there's a screwed end in there as well, just barely, but it should be enough. Right, now we've just got to find something to fill this hole where this used to be. What hose are we going to fit back in this vacuum cleaner? Well, I'm sure you could probably buy a hose online should you wish, but my thought was correct. This is the same width as Hoover, as Fax, probably Hoover, and Shark in the hoses are. Again, it's almost as if these all come from the same factory in the same part of the world. And yeah, this is a Hoover Turbo Power 2 hose. And I'm hoping, he says, that this will screw into one of the ends. He's going to, but it's going to be, I say, going to be very difficult. It might actually be a little bit too thin, but we might be able to fix that. But, oh, I don't want to take the entire pivot apart. I might have to, just so I can get to this point here. Because even if I have to screw the hose in, that might help. Let me see how far I have to get and tell you how we go. And a few minutes later, what I've come up with is this. I have put a bit of cube bond in the ends to try and hold it together. And I mean, it's holding fairly well. Don't need to yank at it because it's only going to move a certain specific way. Do make sure though that you feed the hose through this before you put it together because you might be able to squeeze this part through. But if you can't, it's going to be absolutely horrible and hateful. So, all that remains for me to do now is to fiddle this back together, put the four screws in that hold the hose together, put the pivot back together, and we'll reassemble the head. And a short while and a bit of a jigsaw puzzle later, we have ourselves a fixed head with a hose that is hopefully never going to split, because of course the Hoover Turbo Power 2 hose was never too renowned for that. In theory, Oh, that has a bit of suction now. Oh, I've got the carpet the wrong way. Well, it is sort of doing track marks now. Oh, that was on that. Okay, so yeah, that is Max. That's not too bad, I don't think. Should we have a look at the main unit? While we have it here, so take the bin off, we reveal quite a large looking motor. Although, what's it doing? 150 watts, so that's not too bad. Oh, look, we have a little post motor filter here. Oh, that's that's quite nice and spotless. That's good to see. That can go in there. Hmm. Pull up to empty tank. Oh, that's fairly clever, I see. So that comes out of there. In here is a little sponge filter, which isn't dirty at all. That's pretty clean. And then, well, it seems to have a built-in shroud scraper, so that's actually very nice indeed. And then, well, there's a little clear, little clear ball in there. I don't quite know what that does. Hey, we've got the drill out still. One, two three, four screws, that comes off, oh it's a cone, <laughs> okay, oh yes, yeah, it, it should be a little see-through in a cone, which I guess floats around in there, like so, and then this has a bit of a broken fin, but I don't know or really care about its history, but yeah, that's mildly interesting. Again, a very Vax design. It's almost like a very small Vax Air. Mr. Par Wow will be happy with me calling it that. Oh my goodness, these screws are 
tiny. So there we go, that can go in there, that can go in there, that can go, ooh, not there. <sighs> oh my goodness, don't get caught now. Oh, which random, okay, that only goes in one way, that's fine. That goes on there, that goes down into there. too shabby at all. So, our little Bissell, there's its model number, 2907, bit of dust on it, 097B, the B one. I wonder how bad that A one was. It is now all fixed up and working well once more. Ready to go back to its owner and be useful for hopefully many years to come. So have you ever had one of these Bessel Corders vacuums? What do you think of it? I find it's a bit heavy in the hand, even with the wand on, but it seems to work fairly well on that carpet. Oh yeah, no. That's quite nice. That head is certainly quite interesting and probably worth it just for that. So, let me know if you have experienced one of these and what it was like. And I can get this one back to its owner, which likes it very much. And until the next bashed up cordless bristle, I, and this one, will see you soon. Bye bye.